Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brain Bean here again, back with something a little bit different for you. Now, if you guys remember kind of a year or so ago, kind of back in the good old days of this channel getting started, I used to do switch comparisons every once in a while, and I'm actually working on a project with my Kira, and I thought this might be a great opportunity to do another switch test for you. So if you guys remember from my Kira review, and if you haven't watched that, I'll link that video down below. I had my Kira uh, made with Hako clear switches. And I decided that the Hako clears were just a little bit too heavy for me, so I'm gonna be swapping them out with the Hako violets that my friend over at the Kono store were kind enough to send over to me. And so I wanted to bring you guys along with not only the process of hot swapping out these Hako violet switches um, from my clears, but also kind of talk to you about what the Hako switch is and kind of what makes it different than other switches and also give you guys a sound test of the Hako clears and the Hako violet switches. So let's start by first just talking about what the Hako switches are and what makes them just sort of a unique in the switch market. So they're based off of the Kaihua box design. And so they're ultra solid. They don't have any key wobble whatsoever. And they have sort of a self-cleaning design that also helps keep moisture out, as well as a sort of venting channel that helps push dust and moisture out of the switch as you use it. The switches are ultra durable. They last 80 million clicks, um, which is obviously really great, especially considering that, you know, when you buy a nice pair of switches, you don't want to have them go out on you. So that's always nice. But the differences between the switches and sort of the design behind them that make them feel so great to type on, because these really are some of the favorite switches that I've ever tried. I mean, I, as soon as I tried these switches, even though they're a little heavy for me, the feeling is absolutely great. They kind of feel like a mixture between Topra switches and traditional cherry switches. And you can almost liken the feeling of the Hakko Clears to Cherry MX Clear switches mixed with the Topra 55 gram. And the reason that they feel that way is that it has a light press at the top of the switch, which gets heavier as you bottom out the key. So it actually discourages you from completely bottoming out the key. And if you're a sort of an enthusiast typist that's really trying to refine your typing skills and you don't want to bottom out, then this is something that's definitely gonna help train you to be a little bit better um, with your typing and not bottom out all the way. The main differences between the switches is that the Hakko Trues have a 95 gram actuation force. So to really bottom those out feels, you, know, you really, really have to push down on the key pretty hard. But on the flip side of that, the beginning of the key press and actually getting to actuate the true switch is actually a fairly light key press. And as you really get into it, that's when you feel that force. Now the Hakko Clears are a little bit lighter at 70 grams to completely bottom those out. And again, they get heavier as you go. And then you have the Violets, which are at 40 grams and they increase up about another 10 grams or so as you bottom it out. So up to about 50 grams, which is pretty similar to your traditional Cherry MX Blue or Razor Green or something like that are about 50, 55 grams. And then your traditional um, Cherry MX Reds or browns or something are, are typically around 45 to 40. Um, so this kind of gives you that typical, that sort of feeling that we're used to. The main reason that I wanted to switch from the clears to the violets on my Kira is because while I really like the feeling of the clears for just typing, because I do a very healthy amount of gaming at the same time, I found that when I was using the clears for gaming, maybe just because I'm not used to typing on really heavy switches, I just found that it fatigued my hands quite a bit to keep those keys pressed down like when running around on shooters and stuff like that. Uh, and I also felt like it made me maybe a little bit slower. Maybe that was all psychological just because I had to push the keys harder. But I thought I would enjoy it a little bit more by having a little bit lighter press. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. We're going to swap out the Hakko Clears on my Input Club Kira um, with these Hakko Violets. But before I do that, I want to give you guys a quick sound test so that you can hear what these switches sound like. Then we'll swap them on over and I'll do another sound test so you can hear what the violets sound like. So let's get to it.
Well, there you have it, guys. You got to hear a comparison between the Hako Clears and the Hako Violets. Personally, for me, and using both, I feel like the Hako Clears are definitely much more typist friendly. I think if you primarily do typing on the keyboard, then you're going to enjoy the experience that the Hako Clears give you. There's just a really great tactile feel, and the added resistance really does help with bottoming out. And I think overall, for just a really good poppy feeling tactile typing experience, the Hako Clears are great. The Hako Violets are a much more light and airy feel. And for something like gaming where you want to feel like you have a little bit less resistance for a little bit snappier response, I think you're going to like the Hako Violets. You can definitely bottom out a lot easier with the Violets, even with a little bit of added uh, spring resistance as you get close to bottoming out. Now, for me personally, I like bottoming out my switches when I type. Um, that's just my preference. And so I think I'm going to like these violets a little bit more than I like the clears. Obviously, I'm going to use these for the next week or so and really figure that out. But those are just kind of my opinion. Obviously, the trues are going to be even heavier than the clears, which for me is just way too much spring. My hands are just not strong enough for that to be something that's really enjoyable for me. But anyways, guys, that's it for the video. I'll leave a link down below to my full length review of the Kira if you guys want to check that out a little bit more. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Before I end this video out, I am going to cut to a quick back-to-back -back sound test of the clears and the violets for you to enjoy one more time. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to like the video to show your support. And let me know down in the comments what you think about these switches and which one you think might be your favorite. If you're new here on the channel, I'd love to see you subscribe. And of course, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.